the church that we see is a place of vision. If you've ever been in the dark or scared of the dark, then you know how valuable it is to be in the light. The truth is God doesn't want his people living in the dark or just cluelessly groping through life. God blesses us with seeing eyes and sensitive hearts and hearing ears for a reason. He wants you to live an audacious life full of a huge sense of vision and purpose. The church that we see is a place of vision where God births vision in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we come in and engage the house, as we you know, just lift our hands in worship, as we receive instruction by God's word, as we engage in the community of believers, I really believe that God is filling us with a great deal of his working that is bringing us into a purposeful and vision-filled life. God encounters don't ever leave people the same. You just got in another one. Lean in your heart, take it all in. Let God expand you and stamp on your heart a vision of life and joy and of peace and purpose and generosity and there's so much more. Let God show you what you are made for. Welcome to church. Welcome to a place of vision. The church that we see is as much your church as it is my church. Hey, good morning. Big welcome to Sycamore Church. What a Sunday morning to be alive. What a Sunday morning to be in the heart of all that God is doing. And I have a simple question for you this morning as we make ready to start. What can you do with a Jesus encounter? What can you do with a moment one-on-one -on -one with Jesus? What would it mean to you? What would it look like to you? Because that's what I want you to be preparing your heart for this morning. I really believe that the presence of God is with you wherever you are right now. And that he's all set for that kind of a moment. And as we begin to celebrate worship this morning, as we lean in our hearts for him, I really want you to know this is an encounter with Jesus. Let your heart be open. Let your heart be ready for it. And let's believe for all the possibilities that are locked up in a Jesus encounter. Come on, can we pray for that this morning? And believe that in every corner of the world right now, where people are gathered, this is what is happening. It's an encounter with Jesus. Come on, let's believe for that together. Jesus, thank you that you know us, that you know every single heart, you know every single person, and more than that, you know every single story. And you brought us together this morning. I really believe you're doing something special in lives, God. And I pray this morning that we would encounter you. Let this be one of those moments that will mark us forever, that we will never recover from, Lord. Do something incredible by the power of worship, by the power of your word by the power of our gathering today God and we thank you for it we love you Jesus and we give you all the glory in Jesus name and where you are say a real big amen 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 come on let's lean in let's celebrate worship and let's believe for God's best if you have a friend that needs to be in service share out the link right away tell somebody it's happening already get into service let's believe for a Jesus encounter in Jesus name amen amen I was lost with a broken heart You picked me up, now I'm set apart From the ash I am born again Forever safe in the same sense You were more than my words could say I'll follow you, love, for all my days I'll fix my eyes, follow in your way You are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, we lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love, ever ending. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us.
dead Freedom that made you bow Peace in your anguish Healing you bled to breathe Who could say All his life, yes. The grave returned our souls. How they walk in heaven, eternal, and now in time is by your grace. Amazing grace. Come on, we sing. Always my grateful praise for your grace, Jesus. Selfless God's love is that even though His glory doesn't need our praises, yet the Bible says God delights in the praise of His people, and that's all we are coming to do to, today, this morning. We're going to worship God and make Him delight in our praises. Hallelujah! Worthy is Your name, Jesus.
Tells us in Jeremiah 29 and 11 of a God that knows the plans for our lives and He holds it in His palms. And even though I don't know the next one year, I don't know what's going to happen the next one year of my life, but I know the one who holds it, and we're going to trust Him again. So let's sing this together. Amen. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closed and near And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire was another in the waters holding back the seas and should I ever need remind of how I've been set free there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me there is another in the fire All my dead life for death beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Yes! And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I will bow to the things of this world And I know Ever need reminding how good you've been to me? 
sing those words over our lives this morning at a time like this that there's another in the fire that we're not alone that you are for us through every season of our lives thank you that we can just respond to you in worship this morning God and I just pray that revelation for every brother every sister everywhere this morning God that people are in situations where they really need to know that you are with them Lord I just pray that you would encourage us out of your house this morning that there is another in the fire and there will be another in the fire we thank you for it Hey friends, I want, to read you to, I want to read to you out of Hebrews 13 this morning. Beautiful scripture, Hebrews 13. And from verse 5, it, it starts to speak about let your conduct be without covetousness. You know, because he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, I love verse 6. And this is our response. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me so we can boldly say the Lord is my helper and I just love this scripture as we make ready for a time of prayer this morning because there are all kinds of needs that people have that you know people have shared in before this service and right now on your screen I'm sure uh, in the comment section you can begin to engage and if you have an area of, of your life where you want us to be praying for you let's know this morning and what is what a verse to read as we make ready to pray that the Lord is our helper that there is another in the fire and that's what we're going to be praying for we're going to be praying for miracles this morning for God to do what only he can do listen the Lord is our helper the Lord is our helper what could you do with the help of God this morning what situations in your life can do with the help of God what situations in your family or you know in the lives of loved ones can do with the help of God do you really think that our world can do with the help of God and that's what we're going to be praying this morning the Lord is our helper. I'll just give you a moment engage the comment section wherever you are let's know how we can pray for you and there are all kinds of requests that people have sent it you know and let's just pray together as a family of faith let's lean in all over the world and speak those words because the Lord is our helper can we pray together father we come this morning saying you are our helper you are our helper it is you who said you would be a very present help in time of need and God that's why we call upon your name for brothers for sisters God we begin to pray for every request this morning that has been sent and we begin to pray God for people who need your help Lord as a family of faith we come up this morning saying you are our helper and God we begin to pray the help of God I begin to pray the help of God in situations God I pray the help of God Lord for loved ones for families this morning I pray the help of God where we cannot help ourselves God people have gotten to the end of themselves but God this morning we speak the help of God in the name of Jesus do great and amazing things Lord and 
we prayed over our walls this morning at a time like this God we have truly gotten to the end of ourselves God in our helplessness this morning we cry out and we say the Lord is our helper God would you show up strong Lord would you encourage your people God would you bless your church in the earth God would you encourage the discouraged and lift up the heads of the downcast oh God and let our times be a times Lord of the move of the gospel God I pray Lord that you would shine your light that you will bless churches everywhere God we pray that you will give healing and hope in the world in this time Lord and we thank you for it we declare the Lord is our helper we declare that we are not alone in the fire we declare oh God that there is another and the appearance of him is that of the Son of God thank you that you are with us we give you glory come on where you are can we say amen in Jesus name come on let's sing it one more time and stretch out our faith come on sing it one more time I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bounces through him. I can see the roar in the heavens as the space between when I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the springs and walls gave it. big welcome to church once again so glad that we can have this moment what a time of worship we've had thank you so much guys for leading us so well and guess what we've just gotten started God is doing great and amazing things in your life what can you do with the Jesus encounter what can you do with a moment just sitting across the table with Jesus this morning and that's what's happening in your experience this morning so glad that we can have you in church this morning if you're new or visiting with us in Sycamore Church big 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 welcome and if for you you get to call Sycamore Church home big shout out to you you know it's such a wonderful thing that we can gather you know in spite of the difference in the world at this time but we can gather and have a Jesus encounter because that's what it's really all about one of the things we love to do every time we gather is that we have a question of the day and I've got a question of the day for you this morning. And I would love to hear from you, you know. We'd love to, you to engage the comment sections wherever you're following service this morning. Shout out to everybody on YouTube, everybody on Instagram, everybody on Facebook, everybody on MixLR or wherever you are. If you're just downloading Signal straight from heaven, shout out to you. Um, but it's just so good that we can share the moment. So here's our question of the day. We'd love to hear from you this morning. All right. Question of the day. What did you particularly get right in the last one week what did you particularly get right one thing you're so proud of yourself that you know i got this right in the last one week you know last week we were asking what are you going to do right this month all right so what did you particularly get right in the last one week so 60 seconds to engage the links engage the comment sections wherever you are i'll get some answers from the team guys here and then um, we'll be right back in service That's, that's, that's the moment when everybody gets real philosophical and, you know, um, that's great. I hope you got a number of things right in the last, in the last one week. Um, but good thing, you know, maybe there are not many things you can point out. Maybe there are. Um, either way, you've gotten one thing right. You're in church this morning. So you started out this week with one thing right, and that's really exciting. Um, and then in just a moment, I'm going to hope that you're going to get another thing right. We're about to come around our giving, so that's another opportunity for you to get two things right already this Sunday morning, and that's really beautiful. But before that, I just want to say that there are just so many beautiful things that God is doing in the lives of people and in the lives of our church, and it's so encouraging. Thank you to everybody who sends in praise reports. Um, there are all kinds of praise reports we have this morning about, you know, great and mighty things God is doing in people's lives, provision healings you know successful surgery um, death cancellations and just beautiful things and thank you to everybody 
um, who sends in praise reports and prayer needs. And it's so great that we can rejoice together and stand together as a family. But as we come around our giving this morning, I really just want to say this is one more thing that I'm encouraging you that we constantly get right. That, you know, this is a constant statement of honor that we can be putting out to God. And I'm so glad and grateful for the people of our church who are just constantly saying, you know what, we want to get it right in the area of our generosity. And so big thank you to everybody who continues to honor God in this thing of our giving and our generosity, recognizing that it is a, an integral part of our worship, that our worship is not just about singing, our worship is not just about being in church, but our worship is about responding to God. It's also about responding to God in the area of our generosity. And we believe as a church that, you know, we honor God with the first 10% of everything he increases us with as a statement of our love and our honor for him. And thank you to everybody who is faithful in tithing, all that God blesses us with. And, and over and above that, we give freely in our offerings and sacrifice to a God that has so blessed us and this is constantly a statement of just how blessed we are and I think it's a great thing this morning that we can gather around it again with a heart of worship to say thank you God that we are blessed and we can be responding to you um, this morning and so what we're going to do is that you're going to have all of 90 seconds um, to engage whatever apps you need to and you know there are different ways you can give you can make a transfer um, to our GTP account or you can go to sycamore.church slash give and you can use your card to make a payment in Nigerian Naira or in US dollars and so you're going to have all of 90 seconds to engage that in just a moment when we have prayed and so can we just pray together as a family of faith and thank God for the privilege we have to give to him to respond to him because he has so blessed us he has so loved us and so we can be responding to him and so we're going to pray together if you're next to your husband or wife please hold your hands um, wherever you are um, and let's just believe the blessing upon families upon homes this morning Jesus thank you that we can do this right thing that you know we don't just have to be carried away by need in the world and scarcity and all of that but we can do this right thing and I'm so grateful, Lord, that at the start of the week, we can be honoring you and getting this right by being generous towards you and towards your house. And God, we thank you for this privilege because every time we get to give, we remember that it is because you have already given to us, that you have so blessed us and loved us in Jesus, that we can be responding to you in that overflow. And so God, I just pray this morning that you would honor your word with your people and just create in us, Lord, this steadfast spirit and a steadfast heart of generosity towards your faithfulness. And Lord God, I really just pray that you would bless homes and bless families and bless people who are putting you first this morning and we thank you for it God thank you that devourers are rebuked for our sake and thank you that the promise and the blessing is upon us we thank you for it in Jesus name amen amen all right so you're going to have all of 90 seconds to come around you're given um and then we'll be out of this service and then we'll come back in in 90 seconds and there'll be all kinds of news about what's happening in the life of our church and um, things to look out for and exciting stories from our media team and then we'll be back to worship and then i have an encouraging word to share with you now here's the deal if you feel oh man my heart is nudging there's a friend that still needs to be in church this morning it's still a great moment you can tell somebody hey get around it let's do that quick let's be in church together god is doing in something special we're having an encounter with jesus all right so see you in a bit
branch, pale, dry, on its own, ordinary. But when branch meets branch, and the wind is right, the atmosphere conducive. It takes only a spark, and it catches fire. Slowly, it surrenders itself to the flames, burning passionately, to all of it is subsumed in fire.
But Jesus, we thank you that we can sing those words this morning, that um, your light is shining now in us. And that's what we're believing is going to happen by the power of your word. But there's going to be a shining of your light yet again in us this morning. We really need it, God, in the times and the days in which we live. Lord, do something really incredible. I just pray, Lord God, that your word is going to be so simple this morning. And it's going to be so simple that we would understand it. But it's going to be so profound, God, that it's going to make a mark in our lives forever. And we thank you for it, Father. To you be the glory. We love you, Jesus. We're so grateful that we can have these amazing moments of worship and just celebrate who you are to us. Thank you so much for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you for serving us well. Um, once again, welcome to church. I have something incredible, I believe, to share with you that the Holy Spirit is really going to make real to you um, this morning. Um, good thing is that we're starting out our new series this morning. We called it The Journey, and um, we're going to be starting that out um, this morning. Um, hopefully going to have some three, four weeks on that. And so I just have a, a simple thought to just lay out for you as we start this morning um, that I'm going to title this morning, Don't Journey Without Your Shades. Don't Journey Without Your Shades. Um, don't Journey Without your shades. Um, I don't know if you're the kind of person that loves to journey, that loves to travel, or maybe you don't. Maybe um, roads are bad or, you know, you think they're good. Um, can I just track my time? How am I going to track my time? I need help on that. Um, I don't know how you journey, how you travel, and what you do. But um, I was thinking about it this morning, and I, I have a three-year-old daughter. She's, she's really beautiful, second most beautiful lady in the world after my wife. And, um, you know, she's coming to love Jesus these days, and I believe God is doing a work in her life, but, um, but she's still my side chick and all of that. But I was thinking about it this morning and about going out with her usually. So there are two ways it goes usually. Sometimes you tell her the destination and um, because you've just told her where you're going and there was an agreement that we're going to go to that particular place. And so she's so excited about the destination and she just doesn't want anything of the journey. And so um, she has this thing of, you know, just starting to nag and, you know, just get on your nerves and start telling you, you know, we haven't even gone one minute and she just starts, I want us to be there. I want us to be there. Why are we not there? Let us just be there. Can we not just be there? And, you know, sometimes at night she does that. You're trying to put her to bed and then she's just, I want it to be morning. And I'm like, it will only be morning when you sleep through the night and then it will be morning. Okay. But she's just, oh, I want it to be morning. And then she's telling me sometimes I want it to be morning. And when it's morning, I will want it to be night. And when it's night, I will not want it to be morning. You know, just this thing of we want to be there. That's like the first side of it. The second side of it, you know, is that sometimes she's so into the journey and she's so into every detail. I mean, to the point that it actually gets disturbing for me. So um, sometimes when a driver, then, you know, I've told her, um, the other day, we're going to pick my wife in the airport. So I told her, okay, we're going to pick my wife in the airport. And I just thought, can you just be excited about the fact that we're about to see mom? She's been away for a while. We're going to pick her up. And then, but just on the way, you know, every detail, she just wants to know, who is that man? Who is that? Why, can, why is he not? Why, why are those people walking? Why are they not in the car? And I'm like, you know, can we just focus on where we're going? You know, kind of a thing. Um, or sometimes, I'm, I think this morning, I was reading a Bible story to her and and so it's, it has all these pictures in what they call a Bible, you know, a picture Bible. And um, so she said I should read her story of Noah. And so there was Noah building the ark and then there were all these people, you know, the flood was getting on them and they were like crying for life. And then I'm trying to tell her, okay, so Noah built the ark and this is the ark because Noah obeyed God. And so all the people that were bad people perished in the flood. So it's good to obey your parents. That's what I want you to know from this whole story. And then she goes, points to one of the guys in the flood and says, what is that guy's name? And I'm like, how am I supposed to know his name? Who is this person? Why, what, what bad thing did this person do? I'm like, I don't know all these details. The idea is obey your parents so that you will not perish in the flood. That's just what I want you to know. You know, walked up to me the other day and said, um, Daddy, um, who is in London? I said, there are like many, many people in London. To mention their names. How am I supposed to know the names of everybody? So sometimes we get into maybe a lot of detail about a journey. Sometimes we're just thinking about the destination. Two, kind, two approaches kind of on this thing. But where I'm going to land this morning, a, a very simple thought is just trying to encourage us and say, don't journey without your shades. I think life is a beautiful long journey. And we are going to find that God is not just the God of the destination. But he's the God of the journey. 
That's something that I hope by the end of this, you're really going to soak into your heart. A God is not just the God of the destination, but he's the God of the journey. Because sometimes I think about, you know, I meet people and it's always beautiful to see this, you know, 15-year-old guy who has, you know, some Joseph-like kind of dream and, you know, it's exciting. But, you know, they don't really notice the journey to the dream, to the fulfillment of the dream. So I was thinking about it this morning. How do you read your Bible? Because maybe on one hand you read your Bible and you just read the story of Joseph in, in one sitting. Like, you know, you just start out, Joseph had a dream and then his brothers hated him. And then Potiphar's house, the pit and all of that, the prison. And then Joseph was made second in command in Egypt. Like, it's a good story to just read through. But how about when you have to live through the story? You know, or maybe you read the story of the crucifixion. And then you're like, oh, I don't. Then you just read on. You turn some chapters and you see the resurrection. You know, it's beautiful. Maybe you read the whole book of Job in one day, you know. But the guy couldn't just turn pages on the story as he was living it. And so, you know, we're going to realize that there are all these destinations to come to, but we're really going to need a revelation this morning that God is actually the God of the journey. Um, because it is going to be a real journey. It's going to be a real journey of emotions. It's going to be a real journey of uncertainty sometimes. It's going to be a real journey of pressure sometimes, a journey of pain. Um, but, but also, because of Jesus, it's going to be a real journey of the blessing. Um, maybe you're listening to me this morning and you're struggling to reconcile where you are right now in life. Maybe you're listening and you're struggling to reconcile this sense of the blessing that I believe and all the promise of God over my life and all of that. You're struggling to reconcile that with the experience that is in your world right now. You're struggling to reconcile all that God has promised you with what is happening in your world right now. I have a word for you this morning that I believe is going to encourage you. Maybe for you, it's just you're just trying to make meaning of the details of your life. Um, details that don't add up. You're walking through a season of a lot of uncertainty or maybe a difficult season that, you know, you didn't plan for. Um, I'm, I'm just going to try and encourage you this morning to say don't travel without your shades. Don't journey without your shades. Or maybe for you, you're even walking through a very beautiful season. You've never had it this good. Like, it's just all beautiful, everything you have ever dreamed of. I have a word for you this morning that I believe God is going to use to encourage you. Because the thing is that God speaks to us in a voice of hope. Or, or you can say in a voice of the promise. God, God comes to people all through your Bible. And when you read it, you see that the, the voice of God is a voice that brings hope. Um, God doesn't speak to us in fear. God speaks to us in a voice of hope. God speaks to us in a voice of promise. I've wondered many times, why did Joseph have a dream of, you know, of the harvest and of leadership? Why didn't Joseph have a dream about, you know, the prison? Why didn't they, there were both details in his future. Why didn't Joseph have a dream of the prison? You know, of Potiphar's wife tearing off his garment, of his, of his coat being soaked in, in good blood and his father crying. Why didn't he have that kind of dream? Why did he have a dream of the harvest and of authority and of leadership and all of that? I think it's simple. God speaks to us in a language of hope, not a language of despair and of fear. God speaks to us in a language of the promise. Um, but I believe that he calls us to a journey of becoming all the promise that he, that he speaks to us about. So he speaks to us in a language of hope, but he then invites us into a journey that we must really travel, a journey that we must really walk through to become all the promise that he has shown to us. And maybe you're sitting there and you're saying, well, but I had a dream, a very terrible dream from the Lord. My heart is full of fear, holy fear. You know, God speaks to you in a voice of hope. Now, there, you can have any kind of dream. There are different ways people have dreams. You know, the devil gives people dreams, right? Um, um, Job says that thou terrifiest me with dreams, you know. While men slept, the enemy came and planted um, tears among the wheat, okay? So the devil does give dreams. When you have a dream and it gives you fear and all of that, I promise you it's not from God. God doesn't speak to you in a language of fear. God speaks to you in a language of love and of hope and of the promise. And then again, you might also be having dreams that are just from your own multitude of experiences, you know, um, Ecclesiastes says that, you know, out of the multitude of activities, dreams come. And so you've been watching some real horror movies all day. Boof, boof, shooting, bah! And then in the night, they're shooting and chasing you. I mean, it's part two of what you are watching all through the day, okay? So people have dreams just merely by the multitude of experiences, okay? You've been thinking about the babe all day. Then in the night, you saw her by a well. <laughs> you know, multitude of activities. And then you say, I believe the Lord is giving me peace. 
multitude of activities. That's, that's what's giving you that dream. But when God gives you a word, whether a dream or whether, you know, um, whether a, a word or, you know, God comes with a voice of hope and of the promise, not of fear. Fear involves torment. God is not a God of fear. He's a God of love. All right? And, and, and God is the God of your journey, not just the God of your destinations. So I really want you to know that God is committed to your journey, not just to your destination. And the big question we're going to have to confront this morning is whether we are going to have the right interpretations along our journey. Because this is the deal. I have found that it is in this journey space, um, it is because of the journey space that not everybody who starts finishes. It's because of the journey space. People start out with that strong sense of hope and of excitement and of a word from the Lord and of the promise. But it's because of the journey that not everybody who starts finishes. The journey is why a lot of potential stays unfulfilled. It's because of the journey space. We are good at seeing the promise, but we're not good at embracing the process. It's because of the journey space that a lot of people get tired and back out. It's because of the journey space that, you know, people just give up on dreams and affliction that rises and people just give up and, you know, back out of the journey. Um, I think of how many people start a relationship with Jesus. What a great decision to, to, to say yes to Jesus, to, to commit your life to follow him. What a great decision. But I think it's because of the journey that many people tie out and back out. It's the journey that people start to say, oh, I got called names and that happened and I felt discouraged and, you know, I, I just felt like that and, you know, something went wrong. It's because of the journey space. And so I want to talk a bit this morning about how we can be finding interpretation in the journey space. How can you find interpretation in the journey space? Because quite honestly, do you know what I'll tell you? News headline, the journey is what it is, you know. The distance from Ibadan to Lagos, let's say it's about 120 kilometers thereabout. Um, it is what it is. If you are driving Ibadan to Lagos and, you know, you are dozing off along the journey, the journey is 120 kilometers. If you are driving and you're having this exciting conversation that is inspiring you and all of that, the journey is 120 kilometers. If you are driving and you are fighting with your wife all through the journey and blah, 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 and it's just like the most annoying, you just feel confined in that space. Like, can we just get to Lagos? The journey is still 120 kilometers. What, what we'll finally realize is that the truth, friends, is that the journey is what it is. But it is by the power of interpretation that we can be making wise choices and wise, you know, inclinations along the journey space. It is because of interpretation that people back out on the journey. And so, I want to encourage you this morning about finding interpretation along the journey. The journey is what it is. <laughs> have you had some of those, I don't know what your growing up was like, but did you have some of those exciting experiences growing up when, you know, you'd be traveling maybe with your siblings and then um, you have games going on. Let's count the number of red cars. And somebody else says, I'll count white cars. You are counting red cars. Who is the winner? And then you are in this whole heated... And you didn't realize you had traveled seven hours counting red cars, <laughs> you know. But it's what it is, all right? Um, it's interpretation that we really need. Um, so today I want to show you about what that would mean when we say, in our context, when we say that God is the God of the journey. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you some, should I call them signposts that I think you're going to find along your journey. Um, everybody traveling in whatever regard, just doing life. I think there are some, I call them like signposts that you are going to find along um, the journey. So the first one I will talk about, I'll talk about maybe four, and then I'll just land on this thought of don't journey without your shades because it's real sunny. Don't journey without your shades. So the, the first, the first um, you know, there are different ways people kind of respond to a word from the Lord. Some people hear something that sounds good and they're like, yes. Um, some people are like, mm. And I'm wondering, are you pressed? You know, um, but, but, but however you're responding this morning, it's real good. I believe God is speaking to you and he has a word for you, okay? So um, the first signpost that you're going to come across in your journey Somewhere traveling, you're going to see this. It's, it might be big in your journey. It might be like a billboard to you. But somewhere along your journey, the first one, I call it messings. Messings. 
just this sense of, because we live in a broken world. Um, have you ever messed up? Or maybe it's the reverse for you. Have you ever been messed up? Um, life is full of letdowns. Life is full of, you know, there are failures in life. And, and it's just part of the journey. And what is most important is how you handle it, not whether or not it would happen. Um, we live in a broken world and there would always be all these expressions of brokenness. Uh, people expressing their brokenness. And so there will be messings along your journey. There will just be moments along your journey where, you know, there will just be that sense of brokenness. And maybe it's hurt, maybe it's abuse, maybe it's... But, but can you look on your journey this morning, maybe your journey of life, or it might be internal, it might be external, but can you see that, that signpost somewhere and say, man, I see some messings in my journey. And so I, I think about Paul in 2 Timothy 4 from verse 9. And this is Paul like at the very ending parts of his life. And having done all that you have done, I mean all that you have lived for, you've written like almost two-thirds of the New Testament. Having done all that you have done. Um, I would think that Paul would end his, his like he's giving an account of, of life and all of that. And I just expect, I'll just hear these fancy stories of how exciting and, you know, everything is. But just listen to these words. In, from verse 9, Paul is telling Timothy, look, come to me quickly. In verse 10, he says, because Demas has forsaken me. In verse 14, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. In verse 16, at my first defense, no one stood with me. Everybody forsook me. I'm thinking, Paul. In fact, Paul was kind of getting an attitude. You know this spiritual curse kind of a thing? In verse 14, Paul says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. It's just a blessing I speak to you, Alexander. May the Lord repay you according to your works, you know. What does it feel like to look at the story of your journey and see messings? I think we live in a broken world and sooner or later we are going to find this. Second signpost I will talk about is what I call guessings. And this is because, yeah, we journey in an uncertain world. That um, on one hand, it's the, just the expressions of brokenness. But on another hand, it's just the uncertainty of the world. Guessings. Maybe many of you look at yourselves right now in this kind of, of a season of life and you really feel, man, I know that point. I know this thing about guessings. Everything just feels uncertain. Maybe by this time next month, I'll be able to now start that thing I wanted to do in March. Maybe, maybe by the middle of the year, this is my wedding plan. I've just put it on hold. I just suppose that, you know, I am checking the news every day. Lord, let somebody find a cure. Let somebody find a vaccine. Lord, I want to marry God. Guessings. In Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says these words about Abraham from verse, in verse 8. The Bible says, by faith, Abraham obeyed. When he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out. Now these are, the next two words are, are like some of my favorite words in the Bible. Look at this. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Whew. I'm so excited that in this amazing chapter about faith, I find those two words. Abraham was journeying by faith not knowing. Not knowing. You ask Abraham, guy, how far now? I see they pack everything. Abraham say, yeah, bro. Say, where did they go? Abraham said, I don't know. <laughs> like you're setting out, Abraham. Like you've sold all your property, you know, you know this, this, this thing that was happening a lot in our country and, you know, everybody wants to relocate. Everybody wants to relocate. I'm selling, I'm selling my property. I have a car for sale. I have house furniture for sale. I'm selling. Okay, where are you going? I don't know. How does this work? Because somewhere along the journey, there are going to be a lot of guessings. That we live in an uncertain world. That we're sooner or later going to realize that, you know, there are variables that are not in our control. We're just going to realize our humanity in amazing, humbling ways sooner or later, you know. Third one I'll talk about this morning, and I'm going somewhere this morning. Um, I'm going to soon get ready to land. Third one I'm going to talk about this morning is that um, the third signpost that I think you're going to see in your journey is what I call pressings. Pressings. Because we journey in a hard world. You know, life is hard. The world is hard. You know. Look at what Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians and the fourth chapter from verse 8. Paul says these words, we are hard pressed on every side. <laughs> you know. So, so let me just show you something. Reading from verse 8 to verse 11 of 
2 Corinthians and the fourth chapter. I'll just show you something. I'll be skipping the responses of Paul, but I'll just show you what Paul says. So this is Paul describing his life. Paul says, we are hard pressed on every side. We are perplexed. We are persecuted. We are struck down. We are always carrying about in our body the dying of Jesus and we are always delivered to death. Whoa, Paul. Is that really a picture of your life? Listen, this is a hard world, friends. Sooner or later in your life, you're going to come across what I call the pressings. We journey in a hard world. We journey in a hard world. Um, okay, you want to see Paul's response. So Paul is saying we're hard-pressed, yet we're not crushed. We're perplexed, yet not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about our, in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also might be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Yeah. Okay. Um, fourth one. What, what number am I on? Four. Fantastic. Um, so, um, get ready to come on the keyboard. Um, let's try and start making the, the journey spiritual, you know, with that, that closing out thing. So, the fourth one I want to talk about is what I call lessons. Lessons. Because we journey in a world of discovery. And so I said, messings, because we journey in a broken world. And the second one I said was, um, guessings. guessings, because we journey in an uncertain world. And then I said, pressings, because we journey in a hard world. And lessons, because we journey in a world of discovery. So Paul says these words again in Philippians 4 and verse 11. Not that I speak in regard to need. For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. But look at this. He says, so he says, I have learned in whatever state I am to be. I have learned through every state that I've walked through. I have learned that there's always a lesson happening for me. And he says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. Hmm. Again, lessons, beautiful. We journey in a world of discovery. There's so much to learn. What are you learning? It's always interesting to me, you know, you ask, what is COVID-19, what has it taught you? What are you learning? You just walk into, we live in a world of discovery and it's a major thing that you're going to see as a signpost. It's lessons. Lessons. Okay. So, I'm about to land. This is my encouragement. My Christian encouragement to you is that you don't journey without shades. Because life is what it is. Don't journey without shades. Because life is what it is. But I want you to come to that point where you start to interpret everything happening through the lens of the shades that you choose and so as we do our journey i don't know if you've ever worn one of those shades where you know you had these red shades and everything looked red you had blue shades everything looked blue you know you are wearing shades and you are you know suddenly it's like my summer notes got lifted up you know it's like i got high you know it's like it just got lifted up it just changes the perspective of everything because of what you the lens that you are looking at everything through and my encouragement to you today is, friends, we're going to do a real journey, a real journey, and it's what it is. There are messings, there are pressings, there are lessons, there are guessings. But this morning, I just want to say that because of Jesus, there are blessings. And if you would put those lens on and start to interpret everything through the lens of who Jesus is to you. Who is Jesus to you? And so I know that we are hard pressed and I know that I'm traveling without knowing and I know that there's uncertainty in the world and I know that this journey of life comes with a lot of brokenness and of messings and of what people do and of all of that. My encouragement to you is that you don't just journey through life and you know, you're just looking at everything. What did they do? What is the news headline? I pray you would have a lens of who Jesus is to you. And so you start to see red. When everybody says the wall is white, you say, I'm seeing red. Everybody says, ah, this is what is happening. And you say, I'm seeing it as a blessing because of who Jesus is to me. 
And so friends, you know the truth about this journey is that everything that the devil meant for evil can be worked for your good because of who he is to you. Listen to what Paul says in 2 Timothy and chapter 1 verse 12. He says, for this reason, I also suffer these things. Sometimes I feel like telling everybody around me in life that, do you know the truth is I also suffer these things. I also suffer the messings. I also suffer the guessings. I, I also suffer these things. Then he says, nevertheless, Nevertheless, I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed. It, the, 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 the revelation changes when I know a who, when I know who Jesus is to me. Listen, the truth, friends, we also suffer these things. We also suffer the pressings. We also suffer the same news headlines. We also suffer what's happening in the world. This is the reality of the journey that there are signposts and there are all these hard things happening. We also suffer these things. But he says, nevertheless, the nevertheless that I believe you would find is when you learn what it means not to journey without your shades. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed for I know whom I've believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. I am persuaded. And, and, and on the outside of the lens, it's like you are troubled, but with the lens, I am persuaded. And on the outside of who Jesus is to me, it's like I'm panicking and life is tough. But with the, with the lens on, I am persuaded. I am persuaded. Do you know, friends, that we can change the narrative of our journey by just traveling with our shades? We can change the narrative of our journey by traveling with the revelation of who Jesus is to you. So today, I want to say to you that because of the light of Jesus and his blessings, we can endure the pressings. We can overcome life's messings. We can learn the right lessons. We can find certainty beyond the guessings. Oh, truth, this truth is I want to live in his blessings. I, I want this to be the revelation of my life. I want it to be the revelation of who Jesus is to me. That Paul is sitting in that moment and saying, everybody has forsaken me. And then he's not now starting to talk about, uh, do they even know what I did for them? Do they even know? And then you start to say, oh, this is the, the proof that life is bad. And we start to learn the wrong lessons of life. But when we put on those shades of who Jesus is to us, then we start to learn the right lessons that he is for us, that he is with us, that he is a very present help in time of need, that the Lord is our shepherd. Therefore, we shall not be in one. We start to interpret it through who he is to us. Friends, that's what I'm praying is going to happen this morning to you. And that's my encouragement to you. Real simple thought. But I just pray this morning that you're not going to journey without the lens. I pray this morning you're not going to encounter all those signposts and all that life is. Tim, come, let's, let's worship together in a moment. We're just going to sing, I open up my heart to you and, and, and just respond to him. I don't know what this means to you, but I want you to find a response this morning about who he is to you. That we don't just want to journey and go through everything for what it's throwing at us and, and all that it's, it's bringing to us. And we're just seeing messings, pressings, what they did, what they didn't do and what, what it looks like from their end. And, you know, guessings and uncertainty and we feel like we're abandoned. But today I just pray that as we open up our hearts to him, we're going to enjoy a whole fresh revelation of who he is to us. Can it be for you a moment this morning when you're deciding, I'm putting on my shades, I'm putting on my shades, I'm putting on a Jesus interpretation to the journey of life. And so maybe right now you're on a high and everything looks so good. I pray it will not just be about looking around and feeling it looks good. I pray it will be about a Jesus perspective, about what he's calling you to and about what he's doing in your life in this season. And maybe right now you feel on a low and you feel abandoned and you feel like nothing is working. I pray it will not just be a story of valleys and of the shadow of death, but I pray it will be a story of his goodness and of his mercy that is still following you all the days of your life. And I pray this morning that you will journey with your shades. I pray this morning that you will journey with the revelation of who Jesus is to you. Friends, do you know that in a time and a day like this, we can be holding on to everything he is to us. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. He's the same today and he's the same forever. He's the same when you're on a high. He's the same when you're on a low. He's the same when you feel broken. He's the same when you feel abandoned. He's the same when you walk through valleys. He's the same when you walk through seasons that you have no explanation for. He is the same. And I pray you'll be holding on to that revelation because he is the same. He is 
is still savior. He is still helper. He is still life giver. He is still your justifier. He is still the one who strengthens you out of weakness. He is still your peace with God. He is still the one that lifts up the head of the discouraged. He is still your righteousness. He is still your, your Lord and your King and your soon coming King. He is still the one. And so can we lift up our eyes to him this morning? Can we open up our hearts anew? Can we say, Lord, give us a fresh revelation. As we open up our hearts to you, God, I pray that we'll not just be walking through the journey for what it's throwing at us, God. But I pray this morning you'll give us a new lens, God. You'll give us a new lens, God. We refuse to look at life on the surface. Give us a new lens of who Jesus is to us, God. Make it real to us this morning as we worship, Father, and do what only you can do. And we thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, I'm going to be back to pray for you in a moment about the journey of your life. But let's just worship and let's lead in our hearts and believe for him to do what only he can do. Somebody, you are getting your lens back. You are getting the right perspective again. You are getting interpretation because this is not a story of the message. This is a story of Jesus who is for you. It's not a story of what they did against you. It's a story of God who is for you. It's a God who is healing your brokenness. It's not about the people that broke your heart. It's a story of God who is healing you in this moment. Would you look to him? Would you open your heart? Would you let it all go this morning and worship with all your might? And I'll be back to pray for you in a moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I open up my heart to you. Oh, I open up my heart to you now. So do what only you can. Jesus, Jesus, have your way in me. We open up. I am desperate. I am desperate for a Sing that one more time. Oh, Wherever you are, all, all I want. All I want is to live within your love. Be undone by who Be you are. Be undone by who you are. My desire. My desire is to know you deeper. Lord, I will open up again. Throw my, Throw fears. my fears into the wind. Yes, God. I am desperate for a touch of heaven. I, I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray for brothers and sisters everywhere. Because I, I think you're really on a journey. In some way, I don't know what details all of these things represent to you. I don't know what details the messings look like. Maybe it's a story of personal failures. Maybe you have let yourself down even more than anybody let you down. I don't know what the uncertainties look like in your journey. I don't know what you know, the pressings look like. Maybe right now you are under a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Pressure to make your life work. The reality of pressings. 
and um, maybe you're learning hard lessons in this time and even just trying to figure out what, what is this telling me? What am I to be learning all of this? I, I want to pray for you because I believe God does not just speak truth to us. I believe he speaks truth and grace. And I believe that in this moment, this morning, he wants to give you right interpretation. He wants to give you right interpretation to the variables of your life. That's what I'm going to be believing that he's going to be doing in your life this morning, wherever you are, anywhere in the world, that he's going to be giving you right interpretation in your journey. And all these many things that you just look at and you're looking out of the window on your journey and trying to understand what's happening. I believe that this morning he's going to give you right interpretation. It gives you a fresh revelation of who he is to you. That's what's going to happen to you this morning. But just before I pray for you, I want to make an invitation. I want to make an invitation for people who, you know, are far away from God, who cannot say confidently that I'm in the right place with God. You're just doing the journey of life for what it is, traveling through, going through the motions. But you can't confidently say that Jesus is Savior and He's Lord, that I am forgiven of that life of sin. I'm, I've turned away from it and I've turned to Jesus. You can't confidently say I'm born again, that I'm a child of God. Maybe at some point in your life you had made a decision, but you know as we speak this morning that you have walked away from it. You know that as we speak this morning, you have made poor choices, you've walked away from God, and you want to be made right with God today. Listen, the truth is He loves you. He knows you. He knows every detail of where you are right now, and He's the God who says, I welcome you back to who I am. I'm, I receive you, and you can come. You can come. It doesn't matter how bad you are. It's about how good Jesus is. And I want today to be that day when you'll be made right with God. I want today to be that day when you would say boldly that I'm forgiven of all the guilt and of all the sin and the shame is wiped away and I'm in the right place with God. So here's what I want you to do. If that's you and you say you're speaking to me, I really know it, that this is me. The Holy Spirit is nudging on my heart. I want today to be that day. You know what I want you to do? I want you to put your right hand on your chest right now. I just want you to take a deliberate step. Don't think it in your mind. I want you to do it consciously. Take a step towards God. Just put your hand on your chest this morning. As a statement of believing, the Bible says we believe with our hearts and then we confess with our mouth unto salvation. So as a statement, whether you're alone this morning following service, whether you're with people, wherever you are this morning listening to this, just, just do it as a statement. God sees you right now. He knows where you are. He knows where you are right now. And I want you to do that. And then we're all going to say this prayer. Everywhere we are across the world, we love to join in as a family of faith. So I want to stand with you if you're making that decision. People are praying for you everywhere. And can we say this? But you say these words with your mouth, believing in your heart. Can we say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I come to you today because you've made a way for me to come. Because you made a way for me through, to the come. Death, through the death, the burial, the burial and, the and the resurrection of your Son Jesus. Your son, Jesus. See, I believe it. I believe that, it. Jesus that Jesus died so that I can be forgiven. So I, can be forgiven. I believe he was raised back to life I believe was raised so that I can have a right relationship so with God. See, I make today the day when I surrender the Lordship of my life to you, Jesus. I confess your Lordship over my life. Now say, please forgive me of the past and please give me a whole new start. Now say, I will live for you. I will stand for you. Say, Fill me with your grace. Fill me with your, grace. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. And I will never be the same. And I will never be the same. One, day, One day, I'll be with you in heaven. I'll be with you in heaven. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Congratulations, family. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer, I am so excited about it. God sees you and he knows you. And it's a new beginning in your life. You just got born again. You just got reconnected with God. That's a miracle that just happened in your life. And hey, we would love to hear about it. We would love to be praying for you. We would love to help you take those first steps in your walk with God. And so if you prayed that prayer, you know what I want you to do? There's a link, sycamore.church slash Jesus. Sycamore.church slash Jesus. Please follow out that link. Please fill it out. Let's know about your decision. Let's empower you with resources. Let's pray for you to see you take those steps in your walk with God. It's a miracle we celebrate every week about people who are making this choice for Jesus and are getting to be established with
with him in Jesus name now let me pray for everybody everywhere that God is going to give us the right interpretation in our journey in Jesus name father I thank you for brothers and sisters everywhere that we are gathered this morning people leaning in and hearing your words of truth that people in the realities of their journey God there are people I'm speaking to now that are on a high and are in the best season of their life ever and there are people that are on a low and are finding it really tough there are people that are in uncertainty there are people that are pressed God there are people that are just speculating and guessing around there are people that are broken there are people that have failed and are falling and just need you this morning God we started out with that revelation that the Lord is our helper and so God I just pray your help for people this morning that Lord in the name of Jesus you will give them right interpretation we pray this morning that we're not looking at life for what it's saying to us but we're looking at it through the lens of Jesus I pray this morning that it will be a reality God that you're going to give people fresh interpretation that Lord this journey is going to take up a whole new meaning this journey is going to take up a whole new meaning God black and white is becoming colored thank you Lord God because you're bringing all things new you're making all things new you're making what was broken beautiful you're making what what was despised you're making it the chief cornerstone thank you Lord because you're building our lives again and we will stand strong in that revelation and we thank you for it father and thank you for who you are to us we are grateful father we will never make light of it that we can journey with Jesus that we don't just have to journey with what a world is throwing at us we can journey through a broken world with a life-giving savior we can journey through a world of uncertainty with a savior who is the same yesterday today and forever and lord we can journey through a world that tries to press us down with a savior that lifts us up and we thank you for it thank you lord so you be the glory do great and amazing things i just pray for people on their journey this morning and i pray lord that you would encourage the discouraged i pray lord god that you would strengthen the downcast and lord lift up the heads of the downcast god and lord whatever this journey looks like in a time and season like this I really just pray for people, oh God, that you would make beauty come out of it. And Lord God, just beautify this journey beneath our feet. And we thank you for it, God. In Jesus' name. Where you are, would you say a big amen? Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you blessed this morning? I really believe you are. And what a privilege it has been being together this morning to worship and celebrate who Jesus is to us and just learn of him, lean in. And we're going to be out of this service in just a few moments. And so I'd encourage you to just stay with us um, as we make ready to close out together. And so um, last week, Thursday, we had this exciting time at our surge prayer hangout and we've had that for two weeks now and it has been such a blessing big thank you to everybody who leans in to pray you know it's so powerful that we're able to create an atmosphere all over the world and i really just want to thank everybody who connects with those moments and um, on all our online platforms whichever one you engage thank you to everybody who has been a part of it and this thursday um we're just going to have it a little different we're going to have a church hangout this thursday and it's going to be the same time 7 to 7 30 p.m and we're going to be gathering around some exciting stuff in this journey season that we're on as we just find all that God is doing in the life of our church in this season so I look forward to seeing you at 7 p.m. on Thursday at our church hangout and I'm really believing and praying for you that God is doing great and amazing things in your life thank you to everybody who is a part of our life groups and our connects and who just stays in fellowship in all these small groups and it means a lot to us that you know we might be physically distant but that we can be together in spirit as we continue to share in all that God is doing in our lives and so God bless you real good good wherever you are it's so great to know that you are there and that you are joining into service this morning if you have needs that you want us to be praying with you for we are so glad to do that and there are all kinds of links that you can follow you can pick up the discussion starters from today's service and engage it with friends or in your life groups as um, we love to do as a church every week that we gather and there's all kinds of resources about how you can join our discipleship classes how you can get bible study help and prayer guides and what have you but whatever you do just make sure that in a time and season like this you are seeing it through the lens of jesus that you are embracing everything possible to say that i'm interpreting life through the lens of jesus in jesus name i believe you're going to have a great week i'm going to close out this morning and say a blessing over you this morning but thank you so much for being in church and a real special thank you to everybody who is with us for the first time this morning we are so glad that you got to be with us in church this morning a big welcome please let's know about it that you are there please follow the link sycamore.church slash new here let's know that you are here that you are a part of our service and we'd love to welcome you and just know who you are and welcome to everybody else around it's so great to know that you are there from everywhere in the world and god bless you god is doing great and amazing things in your life 
in Jesus' name. All right, are you ready for the blessing as we close out this morning? Next week Sunday, we're going to continue on the journey series. Invite people to church. Invite people to church. 9 a.m. next week Sunday morning, we're going to continue on the journey season. All right, I'm going to say blessing over you. And then the team is going to do the last song of the day titled Relentless. And I think that's a great encouragement that we can celebrate it. So I'll just, I'll just bless you through the lens, all right? You ready for it? Blessing through the shades. Are you ready? Now lift up your hands where you are. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you peace in all your ways. I declare that this week you are going forward and upward in all God's plans for your life. In the name of Jesus, you would enjoy right interpretation as you do the journey of your life. You would see it through the lens of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, your head is lifted up in honor and it's not bowed down in shame. Your fears will not live and your hopes will not die because God is for you. Have an amazing week doing wonders and enjoying the miraculous power of God. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. And everybody said amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Salvation sounds a new beginning As distant hearts begin believing Redemption's beat is unrelenting Your love goes on Your love goes on Come on! When the world gives way, you carry us, carry us with your endless grace. You cover us, cover us. Your love is relentless. Your love is relentless. Your love is Thursday.